All right, guys, today's lesson is a continuation on 8.6. Uh, if you guys remember, 8.6 was on factoring using this box method. Today, we're taking it a step further. Uh, so before we do that, I just wanted to show you an example of what we were doing because we are going to need to be able to apply that. So uh, remember, we have these steps outlined. We're trying to put numbers in here, and our answers will be what we get out here. Uh, but, but before we do any of that, in the cases where our x squared term is negative, we have to factor out the negative, and what that ends up doing is it ends up changing the sign of everything after it. So here we would have 4x squared minus 12x minus 7. Um, <coughs> and then from there, uh, you put the a term, the thing in front of the x squared in the first box, and the c term, the thing at the end, in the last box. I don't know why my pen is kind of malfunctioning right now. I don't know what to do about it. I'm just going to have to keep going. Okay. Sorry about that. 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. Uh, you list the factors of negative 28. And we're rem remember, we're looking for what adds to our middle term, negative 12. So our factors of 28 are 1 and 28 and 4 and 7 and 2 and 14. And 4 and 7 and 1 and 28 do not, um, never could add or subtract to negative 12, but 2 and 14 could. And the way that 2 and 14 would add to negative 12 is if the 14 was negative and the 2 was positive. So then remember from here, uh, you list the greatest common factor of those two, and you would get 2x. It, then you would say 2x times whatever goes here is going to equal 4x squared. Remember, this is like a multiplication table. This times this will have to, you follow them together, and then you get 4x squared. So 2x times what would that be? It would be 2x. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2x times what would give you a negative 14x? Uh, that would be negative 7. 2x times negative 7 is four, negative 14x. 2x times what is 2x? The answer would be 1. And then as you check, negative 7 times 1, is it negative 7? Yes, it is. So you know you have the right answer. <coughs> so uh, our answer would be 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 7. Uh, that color changing thing is really annoying. And then remember, we had that negative right there, and so uh, we would have to have a negative in front of our expression as well. And so this would be our final answer. Now, the difference between what we did yesterday and what we're doing today is that in uh, yesterday's example, this we would be done. Um, in today's examples, it's going to be say something like this. Negative 4x squared plus 12x plus 7 equals 0. And your goal is to figure out what values of x would give you 0 out. And so uh, the way that we're actually going to solve these problems is by going through this process, getting the factors, and now the factors would be equal to 0. Um, so the added step is going to be to use the zero product property. Hopefully you guys remember the zero product property. Uh, what that says is if you have a product, something right here, right, times something else, and that's equal to 0, in order for that to be true, one of those things must be zero, right? There's no other way to multiply something times something else and get zero out for an answer unless one of those two things was zero. So the way to figure out um, what would give us zero out is going to be to set each one of these individual parentheses equal to zero. So here you're going to write 2x plus 1 equals zero, and here you're going to write 2x minus 7 equals zero. And then you're just going to solve each of these problems individually, and those are going to be your two final answers. So here you would subtract 1 and get 2x is equal to negative 1, so x is equal to negative 1 half. Here you would add 7, so you'd get 2x is equal to 7. Divide by 2, you'd get x is equal to 7 halves, or 3.5. So, uh, that's going to be the whole process for today. Um, uh, this is just kind of summarizing that. Uh, so in order to solve polynomials, so you'll have a polynomial like this, and you're going to have it equal to 0, let's say. 
Um, we're going to use the box method to solve it. Uh, this would have been an impossible expression to solve before we use the box method, but now that we can use the box method to solve it, uh, we can actually figure out what values of x would give us 0 out. Um, and we're going to do this by setting each factor equal to 0, just like we did in that last example. So let's give this uh, example a try here. Um, we have an expression, and it's equal to 0. Uh, you, we can only do this when we have it set equal to 0. If it's not set equal to 0, we have to do something else. Um, but this one is set equal to 0, so we can go ahead and use the box method. 3x squared in the first box, your first term in the first box, your last term in the last last box. Oh boy. Negative 2 right here. And then remember you go ahead and you multiply those and you get negative 6. And then you list the factors of negative 6, uh, which would be 1 and 6, and 2 and 3. And then remember, you ask yourself, which of these factors could possibly get you to uh, positive 1? And 1 and 6 never could, but 2 and 3 could. And 2 and 3 would if uh, the 3 was positive and the 2 was negative. And so you're going to put 3x in the first box, uh, or, or the second box, it wouldn't really matter. Um, and then the other box is going to get negative 2x. Right, because 3x and negative 2x is x. And you play the greatest common factor game, right? 3x is the greatest common factor of those two things. 3x times x is 3x squared. And x times negative 2 is negative 2x. 3x times 1 is 3x. And then our check, 1, sorry here, uh, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And so uh, your factors would then be x plus 1 and 3x minus 2. All right, so, uh, and this is equal to 0, remember, just like this example. And so to actually solve this, then, you set each of these equal to 0. So this one is going to be 3x minus 2 equals 0, and this one is going to be x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 you get x is equal to negative 1. This one here, you need to add 2, and you would get 3x is equal to 2, and then divide each side by 3, and you get x is equal to 2 thirds. This says 2 thirds right here. Perfect. x is equal to 2 thirds. All right, uh, your answer, you do end up having two answers, that's okay. Uh, in most of these, you will have two answers. So, just be prepared for that. Um, this is the last example I want to talk about, and I want to talk about it for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that you'll notice that this is not set equal to zero. In these cases where your uh, one side is not set equal to zero, and you want to try solving it using factoring, um, what you're going to simply do is you're just going to set it equal to zero. So if I subtracted 20 from each side, now this side would be equal to 0. And so um, I would then have the, impression, the expression 30x squared plus 25x minus 20 is equal to 0. And now I have it set equal to 0, and now I can go ahead using the box method. The other reason I wanted to show you guys this example, um, not to mention it, um, part of it is because it's your homework, so I would definitely be writing this down if I were you. But the other part of this is, let's say you put 30x squared in the first box, negative 20 in the last, and then you multiply them and you get negative 600, and then you list the factors of negative 600, and you are listing a ton of factors, and you're looking for ones that add or subtract to 25, and that just does not sound like very much fun to me. Um, there is an easier way for this, though. So... Uh, what that looks like is, sorry, I'm getting rid of all that stuff. Um, what that process looks like is, if you'll notice, uh, 30x squared, 25, and negative 20. Uh, they all have a greatest common factor, right? That greatest common factor is 5. And so you can go ahead and take that out of everything, just like we took out negative 1 earlier. 
Um, if you take out 5 here, you would be left with 6x squared, right? 5 times 6x squared is 30. You'd be left with 5x there, because 5 times 5x is 25, and then minus 4. Um, from here, now you just go ahead... Goodness, that's annoying. I'm sorry, guys. From here, you just go ahead and uh, use the box method with this expression here. Put 6x squared in the first box, negative 4 in the last. Multiply them, and you get negative 24. That says negative 24 right there. Uh, list the factors in negative 24. Those are 1 and 24. 2 and 12. Okay. This was a lot easier before the pen started malfunctioning. Uh, hold on one second here. Alright, the other factors are 3 and 8 and 4 and 6. And wh remember, what we're looking for is which of these factors could add to our middle term, which is 5, and the only factors would be 3 and 8. And so you'd put uh, 8x in one and negative 3x in the other because 8x and negative 3x is uh, your middle term, which is 5. Right? 8x, negative 3x is 5x. So, um, now you play the greatest common factors. Uh, s the greatest common factor of 6x squared and 8x is 2x. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. And 2x times 4 is 8x. So, uh, your factors then are 2x minus 1 and 3x plus 4. This is times 5. Remember, we had that 5 there. And then from here, remember, you think about the zero product property. And so the only way that something times something times something is going to be 0 is if one of those three things could have been 0. And so the what we're going to do is we're going to set these two things equal to 0 because 5 can never be 0, right? You're never going to plug anything in to just a simple 5 and then make the 5 0 unless there was an x right there which you could plug in 0. But in this case, there isn't, and so the only things that could be 0 are this one and this one, and you're just going to set them equal to 0 and find out what value would make them 0. So here you would add 1, and then divide by 2, so you'd get x is equal to 1 half. That's one of your answers. Here you'd subtract 4 on each side and get 3x is equal to negative 4, and then divide by 3, and you get x is equal to negative 4 thirds. All right, hopefully that made some sense. Um, sorry about all the uh, issues. I've recorded re-recorded it a bunch of times, but each time it keeps happening. There's something wrong with my pen. All right, um, your homework is eight, section 8.6, numbers 23 through 37. Uh, your last worksheet also had some problems like this. If you were stuck on those, you can go ahead and try them uh, again after this lesson. Uh, good luck, and I will hopefully see you guys on Tuesday.